Hello, this is Don Zabolanski of Colonial Metal Smithing. Today's Dutch Steamboat Lantern project is going to involve shearing and cutting. And we're going to start off with going over the basic operations of a foot shear, which is a very productive machine in any shop and probably one of the first machines any shop owner would buy. What you're currently looking at is the shear. This is approximately 30 inches in length. And if you look on the bed of the shear, you will see markings which are for helping you lay out your work. In addition to that, there is, and you can just barely see it way back here, are the back gauges. These also have ruler markings on them so you can set the back gauge and put the metal in there and repeat the same cut over and over again. These shears are designed with this side plate to be perfectly at right angles so you'll always be cutting at a right angle when you're holding your material to the edge of the side plate. The side plate exists on both sides. The operation of a foot shear is as you push down on the foot pedal, the blade comes down slowly and runs the full length of the bed and eventually completely cuts the metal. So let me start by cutting the first piece of metal and this will be a piece of turn tin. and I'll put it in and the back gauge has been set at, at exactly 12 inches I'll push it all the way to the back gauge hold it tight here step down on the foot pedal and there you have it a perfect cut at 12 inches and I'll do it again because 12 inches was a pretty standard cut for me. I will show you how to cut out smaller pieces and sometimes I use the back gauge and sometimes I don't. The back gauge has a support piece of metal on it so the minimum distance on the back gauge is basically one inch. Now I'm going to cut out the back piece of the lantern the lanterns were all 12 inches high, so the back piece with the columns that will fold in will need to be basically 10 and 3 eighths of an inch. The back gauge is set at 10 and 3 eighths. I move it in place, step on the foot pedal, and I have my back cut out. If I was doing more than one, this would really, really be a time saver. I use the pattern, of course. I, I put a weight on it to hold it in place. Then I take my scribe and just scribe along the pattern. And it will be a similar process for the top, except the top has a hold in it. But I'm going to use my ring and circle cutter to cut the top out. But I'll show you how to do it by hand because there's a little bit of art to, to that. So now when it comes to cutting out inner circles, this is basically something that requires gloves because you'll have ragged edges. Now you'll see these these are whisk shears. They're sold in any big black store. The yellow handled ones are for a straight cut and they're straight. Red handled ones with a, sh with a short cut are for really cutting he heavy material. These aviation slips have like little serrated edges which helps grip the metal to keep it from slipping. Now these are left-handed shears and I'll show you the use and these are right-handed shears. If you look at the blades, each one of them would throw the metal in a different direction. 
I use left-handed chairs only because I'm left-handed. And if you were right-handed, you would use right-handed shears. But what I do is I cut out the rough dimensions of the circle to get the material out of the way. It's even on an outside circle, I would do the same thing. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the final cut. And if you're really, really good at this, you can actually take the scribe line, which is approximately two thousandths of an inch wide, and you can actually cut right on the line. So as you can see, it's throwing the material off to the left. If you were right-handed, for example, you would go clockwise and it would throw the material the other way. This is a circle cutter. Its basic purpose is to cut circles and rings. Um, it's also a very big time saver. This is one of the cutting blades. This is the positioning that holds it in place and allows it to rotate. The way to do this is you turn down on the shearing blade and enough right now it's just basically penetrated through the metal so I know we're ready to go and I think I have to go down just a bit more this the smaller the diameter the more challenging it is for the machine but as you can see as we go through And you heard that little clip noise. That was obviously from the circle being cut out. I'll just cut this out as waste because they have no intention of using it. And there you go. This operation is to cut the ring out of the top section of the lantern. So basically what we'll be doing is cutting this part out. As you recall we did it by hand the first time. This time we'll be doing it with a machine which is certainly a time saver. It's a piece of stock in lieu of actually being cut out because when you set up the machine it's not perfect so it's easier to cut the circle and then actually cut the piece in accordance with the template. So I'm going to bring down the actual cutting edge until it penetrates the sheet and you can actually hear it sheet. And and I just rotate it around. Obviously, it's not deep enough. Okay, there we go. Now, this is a four inch circle, so it's a little bit smaller than the last circle I cut. In fact, the gauge has, you can set it to a four inch circle. And here we come cl closing in the ring, it came off. I'll lift the clamp and then take out the circle, which is four inch. We could probably use that for something at some other point in time. And here we are. Pretty nice circle. Now that I cut the circle out, I'm going to take my scribe and I've already aligned the center hole to the center hole of the pattern. So now I'll take my scribe and
trace the pattern out. So in this episode I showed you how to use the shear as well as the circle cutters. Here's the circles that are cut out for the fonts and I'll show you how to put them together in one of the episodes. Here's the pieces that I traced from the pattern. One has a hole in it as you can see and the other does not and this is a copy of the pattern. Here's a copy of the top. I still have to trim out the little corner pieces, but all the big cutting is done. On these lanterns, there is a bracket that holds the mirrors on the back of it to cover the electrical wires, but also to give you a nice diversion of the light reflecting off the mirrors. And there's two of these. We cut the back and then we cut the columns and that's pretty much what it takes to cut this out. Like I said, there's four other lanterns. I'm just showing you one for simplicity purposes. When you look at this, the, the machinery that I have, you go, wow, you know, that looks like more of a modern shop. Let me tell you that modern shops would be CAD operated. They would cut things out with high pressure water at 60,000 PSI with grit in it. It would leave, it would cut it out perfectly every time. So this, like I said, is really old generation. And you can go all the way back to where you cut things out, you know, with a pair of tin snips and you form everything around uh, mandrels and so forth. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Turn tin was originally used on roofing of really well-to-do homes like in Charleston and so forth. It was steel plate covered with lead on both sides and eventually after 30 to 50 years, depending on where you were, it rusted through. So they no longer make turn tin because one, it rusts through, but two, the lead plate on the top and bottom is really an environmental hazard. So the new turn tin is three or four stainless steel covered with actual tin which is plated on it. So it would look very similar. Um, the patina as it would age would have a kind of a grayish look. But one of the things about stainless steel is obviously it never rusts. The next episode would be on using bar folders and so forth. Bye.